Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Anda seperti biasa sedang menonton sudut pandang. Hari ini sekali lagi saya berbangga kerana ada seorang saintis terkemuka dunia yang datang untuk berbicara dengan sudut pandang dan uh, oleh itu saya ingin meminta kebenaran untuk berbicara dalam bahasa Inggeris. Uh, with that, I would like to welcome the one and only Professor Roger Kornberg, Thank the you. Nobel Prize winner for 2006 for chemistry. He didn't share it with anybody. Usually, you will, you know, it's usual for you to see the prize being shared by uh, two persons. But for 2006 chemistry, it was you and you alone. Surely, the achievement is great for the committee to award you such prize. And uh, I would like, I would try to make this simple. It's basically about DNA. And thanks to Hollywood, DNA is not such a foreign term because. Uh, We watch criminal uh, crime scene investigation CSI all the time, and we know they use DNA to catch the bad guys. However, we do have to go a little bit back uh, towards our primary school days and uh, to look at uh, enzymes and virus and cells. So, um, please correct me if I get this wrong. It's basically your research is about how uh, DNA is uh, replicated by an enzyme, for example, RNA. And uh, how that later goes all the way to form proteins, which if we don't have that being done in our cells all the time, we would just wither and die. Not just us, but maybe the yeast that you use as your subject and other plants and organism. Is that that's right? exactly right? And if I may say the same thing in a slightly different way, okay. DNA contains all the information for constructing and for the function of every living thing. Mm -hmm. So we are nothing more or less than our DNA. Uh, every thing that, uh, every component of our body and every capacity that we possess is written in our DNA. Mm -hmm. The problem is how to execute those instructions. That is the role of RNA and that is the subject of my work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you get started in this? We know you have a very strong influence in the form of your late dad. And uh, do you see that it's only natural for you to pick this up and move on? Not at all, not at all. In fact, I actually began my career in science in another field. Mm -hmm. uh, I started out as a chemical physicist mm -hmm. and I studied uh, a problem in uh, molecular motion mm -hmm. unrelated to DNA. Mm -hmm. The molecules I studied were fat molecules at the time. Uh, they had nothing to do with genetics. Uh, there, I became interested in DNA when uh, at a subsequent stage of my training, I went to a laboratory in Cambridge, England uh, in order to learn a technique mm -hmm. uh, called X-ray diffraction that was not available mm -hmm. uh, to me in the United States at the time, mm -hmm. uh, certainly not in the university where I studied at the time. And uh, I was looking for a problem to practice this technique. Mm -hmm. It turned out that there was a, uh, an unsolved problem that I could explain to you briefly related to DNA. Uh, and so I began actually really using it only as a vehicle for learning something else. Mm -hmm. um, somewhere along the way, I became interested in the function of DNA. I became interested in how the information in DNA is expressed to give rise uh, to a living, breathing organism. Mm -hmm. And that led me to study the process of making RNA from DNA, to which I referred. Not just scientists, but a lot of people around the world would like to have the key to the secret of life. And DNA is greatly linked to that because, like you said earlier, everything is coded there in our, our genes, for example. But uh, what you have done, correct me if I'm wrong again, this is quite a technical subject for me, uh, is look at the process. You even captured the process and, and, and film a snapshot of it. That's why it's so important and crucial what you are doing and what you have done. So you're quite right. The Uh, we wanted to understand how the information in DNA is expressed. Mm -hmm. We knew that the process involves copying the genetic information <clears throat> from the form called DNA 
into a closely related form that we call RNA, uh, we knew that that is the key decision point in the process of uh, the use of genetic information. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also knew that in order both to understand and control uh, the process, we needed to discover how it works. You can't figure out how anything works if you cannot see it see and it, analyze yeah. it in detail. Mm -hmm. So the goal of our research was to literally visualize the process. That took us almost 30 years, but we eventually succeeded. And these are very, very small things to study. You know, DNA itself, and you're looking at the atoms that made up the molecules, for example, 30,000 atoms, for example, uh, involved in uh, the enzyme itself, and uh, synchro synchrotron, the machine, you say that is yes. very crucial to what you have achieved. How crucial was it? So let me first explain. The scale is indeed very small. Mm -hmm. So the object that we photographed is one billionth of a meter in mm -hmm. size. It is made up of 30,000 individual atoms, and our picture shows the location of every one of those 30,000 atoms on the scale, as I say, of one billionth of a meter. The only way to reveal that information was with the use of x-rays that are produced in what is called a synchrotron. Yeah. There are a few such places in the world, and fortunately for us, one is down the road, just a few miles away, mm -hmm. uh, at Stanford, mm -hmm. um, at what is called the Stanford Synchrotron Radiation mm -hmm. Laboratory. So, um, there's, uh, uh, you diffract, a uh, diffraction process involved, and then the computer will analyze the result of That's that particular correct. diffraction. So the way in which we produce the picture is by shining x-rays mm -hmm. on this very small molecule, mm -hmm. uh, as I say, a billionth of a meter in size, then we record the pattern of the x-rays bouncing off the molecule, mm -hmm. and then we use a computer to analyze that pattern and recreate an image of the molecule. I think I've, I've managed to pass this particular uh, subject for, for now. We need to go for a short break, but once we come back, where do we go from here? Because this is very, very crucial in, in biotechnology, for example. But uh, what do we do with it? This is fundamental science. And after fundamental science, there's applied science, for example. Commercialization. We'll discuss that after this short break. Thank you for still watching Sri Pandang. I'm, I'm, I'm still here with the Nobel Prize winner for Chemistry 2006, um, Professor. We have explained briefly about uh, what your research is all about, DNA, RNA, transcription, the secrets of life, but uh, the importance of it in everyday life, for example. We know that without that particular process, we would just die, for example. Organisms would just wither and die. But uh, true science, we will get uh, other products or inventions and innovations. Where do you think your particular finding would bring commercialization of products and innovation after this? So there are doubtless many applications of the knowledge that we have acquired mm -hmm. because of its central role. I can give you a couple of examples. Yes. Um, but as I say, I'm certain that over the years there will be many more. Uh, one uh, obvious example that relates to a problem of current great interest is stem cell biology. Uh, you, you and your viewers are doubtless aware uh, there's great interest in stem cells for the cure of diseases mm -hmm. which require the replacement of diseased tissues. Yeah. Um, or the uh, substitution of 
uh, a uh, body part that oh, has been lost for some reason. In order to convert a stem cell into a desired tissue, it is necessary uh, to bring about the expression of the appropriate instructions in the cell. Mm -hmm. If you want to convert a stem cell into a muscle cell, you must express the component of the genome in the stem cell mm -hmm. that directs, that specifies, that uh, encodes the architecture of a muscle cell. Mm -hmm. Conversely, if you wish to uh, turn the stem cell into a skin cell, um, you must not express the muscle potential, mm -hmm. but you must express the skin potential. That process mm -hmm. of expression um, is one and the same with what we have been discussing. It is transcription. The decision whether to make a skin cell or a muscle cell depends on the appropriate control of transcription. Mm -hmm. Our work has made possible uh, the very control that is required in this case. So we can now manipulate it to our advantage, the process of transcriptions that happen at the cellular level to you know, uh, grow some tissues or, or organs, for example. Is that what you're saying? We have, uh, I think, overcome some of the main obstacles mm -hmm. to such control. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, it may even be possible to do it today. Certainly, it will be possible in every case mm -hmm. uh, in the foreseeable future. For that, as I say, is one example. Yes. Um, if you would like, another very straightforward example is in the cure of viral disease. Mm -hmm. So we all know that bacterial disease mm -hmm. is largely um, eradicated by the use of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. uh, these are wonder drugs and almost any bacterial infection uh, can be treated successfully with antibiotics. But there are no treatments for viral diseases. Okay. Uh, there uh, are one or two drugs on the market mm -hmm. uh, which have limited effectiveness, mm -hmm. but there are hundreds of viruses that infect humans. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that our knowledge of transcription Indeed, that the structure we have determined, the organization of atoms in the key molecule, mm -hmm. will serve as a basis now, and I should say rapidly in the very near future, for the creation of very powerful drugs to combat viral disease. It's cure, for example? Absolutely. Uh, we will make drugs that will cure viral disease. Going back to the tissue generating part, uh, cancer, for example, because what, what you have studied shows that the process is very specific, very, um, there's no room for error. Nature has put it in such a way. That's what you also That's correct. are finding, right? That's correct. Cancer represents an example where this very same process that we discuss, mm -hmm. what we are speaking of, has gone awry. Uh, a mistake has been made and the wrong genes are transcribed, the wrong information is expressed in the wrong cell at the wrong time. In order to correct that, we must once again exercise control. Uh, knowledge of the mechanism that we have gained permits us to exercise such control. There you go. No wonder the Nobel Prize for Medicine in 2006 was also linked 